Judging from Toriyama's point of view, Frieza is truly the worst of the worst. Hey guys, Masakoex here. Now, today's discussion is less about Super and more about its parent show, Dragon Ball Z. Now that I've come back from Ireland for a little bit, and while I'm preparing to head off to KamiCon with my TFS buddies, I thought, let's talk about one of the show's biggest characters. Not a good guy, not an antagonist, but a true full-on villain. I'm talking about Frieza. As we all know, Frieza is indeed one of the most recognisable characters in the show, both good and bad. He was the galactic emperor for an undetermined amount of time, at least decades, probably even centuries. He ruled with an iron fist and a pretty penny, conquering planets one by one and then selling them off to the highest bidder. In total, according to the original manga, Frieza had up to 79 planets in his possession. And if you actually throw Resurrection F into the mix, that's over 400 planets. That's at least several solar systems controlled by one guy. And from that pool of planets, he amassed a huge army to do his bidding. And thusly, we got to see the likes of Zarbon, Dodoria, and the Ginyu Force, to name a few. The Saiyans were just one of many races that Frieza conquered and used to his own ends. He had a beef with the Saiyans in particular because of all the legends of the legendary Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan God in later volumes and series and movies. Frieza had a particularly close relationship with the Saiyans, you could say. You might even say that their relationship was explosive. Too soon? One of the biggest mysteries about Frieza, though, is his heritage. Just where did he come from? What inspired the creation of Frieza and his family? In terms of his actual race, nobody's really sure. What do you call him? Freezer race? Mutants? Changelings? Frost people? Well, that went out the door after we saw Frost. It's one of the show's most talked about topics. Does he even have a race? Are Freezer, Cooler, King Cold, Kareza, Chilled, etc. just a bunch of mutants from another race entirely? We never really got a definitive answer from Toriyama, and to be honest, I'm actually okay with that. Part of Frieza's appeal is his mystery and ambiguity. We don't really need to know where he came from. That doesn't matter. What matters most is the here and now. As far as we're concerned, Frieza, his father, and his brother in the movies are here to strike fear in the hearts of dozens and dozens of populations. Billions of people, all under one guy's tyrannical rule. He would dominate the northern quadrant of Universe 7 and farm its planets for profit. End of. That's all we needed to know. But what we do want to know is where Frieza's personality came from, both in look and feel. Toriyama has stated many times in various interviews that Frieza is a mishmash of different things that he found scary as a child and as an adult. It kind of makes sense really because all the things that make up Frieza are inherently scary. His horned head, the exoskeleton, the reptile-like features, ooh, it's enough to make anyone feel a slight sense of foreboding and being unnerved. It's just scary, just on its own. If you saw Freezer for the first time, you think, wow, that guy looks scary, he must be a bad guy. Of course we see influences of different sci-fi monsters in Freezer's forms and various transformations, the most obvious being the Xenomorph from the Alien franchise in Freezer's third form. It just emphasizes the fear factor further. Except this form from the GT live action show from 1997. Yeah, that one just looks kind of goofy. I remember when I first saw Freezer on television and I immediately thought, yeah, that's one creepy bad guy. It got the message across the moment you saw him. This guy is here to be bad. In an interview translated by Kanzenshu, Toriyama is explaining how he came up with Frieza and why he differs from different villains. It was for a TV special and live exhibition called The World of Akira Toriyama. One particular segment of it was a conversation between him and Masako Nozawa, the voice of Goku. In it, Toriyama states that I'm not good with drawing truly bad guys, I guess it's probably just Frieza. Like, he was truly a bad guy. The others all have an aspect that you can't hate remaining somewhere in there. What Toriyama means is that he believes that Frieza is the only character that he made to be a bad guy that has no discernible positive traits. He is just pure evil. Sure, he's elegant and polite and somewhat flamboyant to his enemies and subjects, but that's just an act. 
It's all just made out of sarcasm, contempt and malice. It's not genuine. It's just there to suit his personal gains. He's effectively mocking everyone he meets. King Piccolo is a possible exception because, well, he's basically the devil. But you could argue that because he is basically the manifestation of evil from Kami, the guardian of Earth. Kami purged himself of evil to take on the mantle of Earth's protector and from it came King Piccolo. So he kind of doesn't really count because he is just evil from another character, whereas Frieza, he is one person. So why did Toriyama make Frieza so unlikable? Whereas other bad guys like Cell, Majin Buu, Raditz, Vegeta, etc. had something about them that made them remotely likable, they weren't wholly bad. They had a justifiable cause. They showed respect. They showed honor. They had some kind of hidden motive. It might have something to do with the era of Japan that Frieza was created in. The character was most likely conceived in the late 80s when Dragon Ball was slowly moving away from its magical adventure days and then moving into the era of the Saiyans around chapter 195 or volume 17. Frieza appeared in person 52 chapters later, 247, in late 1989. Why am I telling you this? Well, in the late 80s, there was a huge property bubble in Japan, which was exploited by so-called land sharks or land grabbers. In Daizenshu 2, Toriyama specifically mentions these types of people in an interview that he does with the book. He states that, Having become the strongest on the Earth, Goku and company had also beat the Saiyans who came from outside of Earth, and then they went out into the universe. I came up with Frieza around the time of the bubble, and the land shark was the worst person of all so I made him the number one land shark in the universe. Said bubbles sent property prices and stock prices through the roof, skyrocketing, and it was all down to those pesky land sharks. They snapped up scraps of land and properties, either fraudulently or by force, much like Frieza. These monopolies cause prices to inflate unnaturally, and we all know what goes up must come down. Also, not many people stood to profit from it. You either profited from it or you suffered horribly by being priced out of the market. You couldn't find a house if you were a first time buyer, or if you wanted to move up, then it was very, very difficult. By early 1992, the bubble burst and Japan went into an economic tailspin, which it's never really truly escaped from to this day. So Toriyama, much like most of the Japanese population, had a raw spot towards these land sharks and land grabbers. But instead of protesting, Toriyama made a pastiche of them in the form of Frieza and his galactic empire. Lord Frieza, one of the biggest tyrants of Universe 7, a true galactic overlord, was mostly modeled off speculatory scumbags and opportunists. What an evil bastard. It's rather interesting once you delve into the intricacies of this period. Thanks to Toriyama, it has been immortalized in the form of one of anime's most infamous villains. Frieza is a manifestation of an idea, a concept, a way of life in late 80s Japan, a movement, a trend which spread like wildfire and hurt thousands and thousands of thousands of homeowners and investors. There is nothing good in Frieza's personality. He is a greedy soul who will walk over everybody in the universe just for his own selfish interests. Much like the people who collectively manipulated one of the world's biggest economies, especially in the late 80s, without any regard for the population as a whole, just their selfish wants and needs. These parallels are remarkable. So what did you guys think? Did you know about Frieza's Landshark origins? Do you think there's any good in Frieza's character whatsoever? Leave a comment below and let's get this discussion going. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until the next one, be sure to like and subscribe. Until then, catch you later.